I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, we've been talking about entering God's rest. Praise God. Now, before we go into today's broadcast, can we make requests for our daily bread? I've told you this is a command from the Lord to do this every day on this broadcast. So are you ready? With boldness and the attitude of faith, join me right now to make this demand. Say, Father, I demand now my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Yep, so we've been talking about entering God's rest. Listen, as we are winding down to the end of the month, it's important you take these things I'm sharing with you seriously. I mean seriously. Praise God. The reason is because there is, you know, just like he said in Hebrew, that there is, is, there is still the rest for the people of God. We read it yesterday. Maybe we should read it again. Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 4. Verse 9, it says, There remained therefore a rest for the people of God. It's still remaining. Now, remember Jesus said, Till heaven and earth pass, not every, not one jot or tittle of the law will go without being fulfilled. Meaning, every dot. You know, the dotting of the eye, the crossing of the, all of, every one of them must be fulfilled. Now, what does it mean fulfilled? you will see that it was not a mistake. You will see that God wasn't just talking. You will see that every word, every word of God is on purpose. Even the and it's on purpose. <laughs> now imagine God speaking and God says, you know, um, so then um, all those M, then M, you will realize that they were all on purpose and they carry Wait, I'm telling you the truth. Every, no wonder the Bible says man shall live by what? Every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Every, every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. It says man shall live by it. Now, when he says every word, that's to tell you that there is no word coming out of the mouth of God that is meaningless. None. None. You see, God is so accurate with his word that sometimes it's amazing. Let me show you something in Genesis. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You, you need to see this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Genesis chapter 15. Watch this. Genesis chapter 15 and verse 13. And he said to Abraham. Now, this was God having a dialogue with Abraham. Now, God had instructed Abraham to bring a sacrifice and do certain things. And Abraham had obeyed. So, then the Bible says, God caused a deep sleep to fall on Abraham. And then this is what he said to Abraham. He says, and he said to Abraham, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them and they shall afflict them 400 years. And watch now. And also that nation whom they shall serve, I will judge. And afterwards, they shall come out with great substance. Take note of this. God says they will be there, they will, be, they will serve them for 400 years, they will afflict them for 400 years. And then God says, that nation that is going to afflict them, I will judge them. And the last thing he says is, and afterwards, you know, after this time, and after the judgment, I will judge that nation. He says, 
afterwards they shall come out with great substance now god spoke this word before isaac was born isaac was born became a grown man and he gave birth to esau and jacob esau became an e jacob became an old man had his own children and you know the story joseph was sold into slavery he, he was he became a slave in egypt and he grew and jacob was an old man i want you to see how this thing went now god had a private conversation actually ah, let me show you something this was even in a vision because verse 1 of Genesis 15 says, After this is the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision. Now that's one of the ways God speaks. He speaks to you in a vision. Now so I tell people, you know, sometimes people have dreams and then I don't understand the dream. What happened in the dream? I was just walking and walking and walking. Then I now go to one junction and I saw somebody I knew and I waved at him. Then I now walked and walked and walked and walked and walked and then got to another place. I saw water, I was thirsty and I drank water. And I said, please, what's the meaning of that dream? And, and somebody is trying to really, really, really interpret that dream. As a child of God, the dreams that should be important to you are dreams that carry in them the word of the Lord. Now, just like it says here, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision. Vision is like a dream. But you see, what, what makes it, it's not every dream that carries the word of the Lord. But when you, are, when you tune your mind to always hear God, then even your dreams, you'll get to that point where your dreams are mostly selected. I didn't say all of them, I said mostly selected. And you begin to realize that the word of the Lord is coming to you in that dream. See that now? Now, so now knowing that it, this was a dream or this was a vision and the word of the Lord came to Abraham. See, now from this time, think about how many years. The 400 years did not start with Abraham. That he said, okay, uh, maybe Abraham will do 10. Isaac will do like maybe 60, 70. Jacob would have done like, no. The 400 years hadn't started till Jacob went into Egypt with his family after Joseph was the ruler and prime minister. You understand what I'm talking about? Now, God had spoken this thing long ago. Now, think about it. Who was the intercessor that was interceding? Like, God, remember your word. Remember your word. Remember your word. No one. Because God says they will be in captive. Nobody would hear this kind of prophecy and say, Lord, remember, you, we are supposed to go into captivity. Can, you, can your spirit carry us into captivity? Now imagine if God comes and tells you, hey, yeah, just imagine, you know, God, God comes and, and says, you, you are going to go to prison for two years. And after two years, I'm going to bring you out and then I'll bless you mightily. Now, yes, the end result seems good. But I tell you, most of us would want to avoid that first part. Now, you've not done anything wrong. You're not planning to do anything wrong. And then the word of the Lord just comes to you and says, you, you're going to prison for two years. And me, how? Prison? No. Father, I reject. I die. Now, which one are you rejecting? The last part or the beginning part? No, the beginning part. I, I reject the beginning part. But he says that beginning part must happen before the last part happens. No, 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 no. Nobody's going to sit down and say, Father, let your word be fulfilled in my life. Let your word be fulfilled. And he's thinking, you're going to go to prison. Yes, let your word be fulfilled in my life. See that now? But you see, now, God spoke these words to Abraham. Now, watch what happens here. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Let me show you something here. Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3 and verse 21. Now, remember, God spoke these words to Abraham long ago. Right? Now, here is God coming again to a man named Moses. This was several years later. And God met him at the back at the mountain, you know, the burning bush experience. And God began to speak to him how he wants to deliver the children of Israel. 
Now, look at what God said. The same God that spoke to Abraham, speaking to Moses, he says, um, let me start from verse 20, Exodus chapter 3. So I will stretch out my hand and strike Egypt with all the wonders which I will do in its midst. And after that, he will let you go. And I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall be when you go, you shall not go empty handed. Did you see that? So God spoke to Abraham. And after more than 500 years, because I'm counting before they went to captivity, I'm the actual time from when God spoke, more than 500 years. More than. Now, he comes to Moses and repeats the same thing he said to Abraham, a part of it, because he said, your children shall go. Now, God comes to um, Moses and he wasn't saying that, oh, I, re I have remembered the word that I spoke to Abraham. And I, no, he, he just came, I want you to go and save these people from me. And then he began to instruct him. Then he said something powerful. He says, I will, when they come out, they will not come out empty handed. Now in Exodus chapter 12, Exodus chapter 12, thank you, Holy Spirit. Verse, verse, um, let me, let me see, verse, verse 36. And the Lord had given the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they granted them what they requested. Thus they plundered the Egyptians. <laughs> now, why am I sharing this with you? God never forgets his word. You see, the, as long as the word has gone out of his mouth, he finished. I, I told you something. The principle of rest is in Genesis chapter 1 and in chapter 2, when God rested from his labor. And I told you, what was the labor God did? He was speaking. He was speaking. He was speaking. After speaking for six days, on the seventh day, he rested. Now I told you, I said, what he said in those six days, some of it have not yet been fulfilled. Why? Because the timing hasn't come. Are, are you following me? Now, so you, can, you see every detail of God's word. God spoke something many years ago. Because sometimes, because God has spoken to you last week, you are breaking your head, crying, Oh God, your word must be fulfilled, your word must be fulfilled. Which word? The word you spoke to me last week. Father, it must be fulfilled. I see that word come to pass. Huh. You know, I was talking to someone recently and we we're talking about our nation. And we all know that there are, before the election, you know, there were lots of prophecies that came forth. And there's a bit of mixed... Um, feeling about the events that have taken place. So I was talking to the Lord about this and I said, Lord, why does it look like your word is not coming to pass? And immediately I heard the voice of the Lord praise God. You know, sometimes the way God will speak to you, like, okay, okay, so praise God. So I was like, you know, you had this conversation, Severally, you know, I had this conversation with people and, and like, but, but what, what happened? Why does it look like God did not speak? Or why did it look like we didn't hear well? You know, so I was talking to the Lord. I was taking this walk and I was talking to him. I said, but Lord, this is a bother to everyone. Why does it look like 
what did you let it look like? And, and the word of the Lord just came to me straight. He said, because it has not been fulfilled yet. <laughs> now, that's how I received the word of the Lord. I said, okay, sir. Praise <laughs> God. Yeah. You know, you think because you had God, you want to determine how he brings his word to pass. Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is like a man who plants a seed in the ground and he goes to sleep night and day. He doesn't know how that seed will become a tree. He doesn't know. But the tree, because it's planted, something begins to walk on it. And it begins to confess the blade and then it sprouts and then it becomes a tree and begins to bear fruit. He doesn't know how. We are trying to know how. And that's our problem. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah. Don't break your head over unfulfilled prophecies. If God spoke, it will surely come to pass. It's as simple as that. So imagine Abraham telling his friends, this is what God said to me. And his friends are busy watching to see when uh, Isaac is going to be captured and taken into captivity. Just think about that. Because Abraham said, God spoke to me. I said, my, my, my seed my descendants will be in a foreign land and they will be in captivity and those people will punish them. So everybody will be waiting to say, this man said his children will go into captivity. So they'll be watching. Maybe they will be out of love. The nations or the cities around, there, around Isaac will form kind of a defense just in case. But nobody actually comes. Okay, maybe he's not Abraham, Isaac. Maybe he's... Jacob. Or maybe it's Esau. Then they begin to watch and watch and then nothing. Nobody comes to overpower them. Nobody comes to overthrow them. Nobody comes to run over their city. But then one day, they say, oh, there's food in Sussex. Oh, wow. Let's go there. We have money to buy food. Praise God. And they went. Unknown to Jacob, their lives was to fulfill what God had said many years ago. So also unknown to Moses, he was going to be the one to fulfill the other parts with the children of Israel. You see that now? Don't break your head about all fulfilled prophets, but take note of this. Every word that has come out of God's mouth will surely be fulfilled. Now, knowing this will bring you into the place of rest. And the rest is to find out what has God said. Find it out, understand it, and then you enter into rest. Praise God. I'll continue from here tomorrow. Father, I pray for everyone watching. Lord, make today an exceptional day for them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, receive God's grace today. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.